Hey guys, thanks for joining me today uh, on the bench. You can see I have this Romulan Warbird. This is from the old AMT kits that were released uh, way long, quite a long time ago. Now, I built one of these years and years ago, probably the early 90s. I did do one early in my early days of this channel that uh, I think it turned out pretty good. I look back at it. I think I've come a long way since then, but it still looks uh, not bad. It had lights and everything. So if you watch my channel, you know that occasionally I have these kind of models. I find these on like eBay for, you know, $10 or less, you know. Uh, to me, it's like um, a cheap way of working on my modeling skills. So I found this and uh, I believe it was like $10 with shipping, so pretty cheap. And then, um, you know, of course, it was together like this this is exactly how it came boxed up um, and like on my early days of modeling you can see where did this kind of slapped on some glue there's not even a lot of cleanup going on you can see uh, where the sprue are connected to the parts of the model all the seam lines you know and this is a, a tough model anyway um, especially like these huge gaps here that's a huge gap. It's just a, I remember when I built the other one. It's a lot of cleanup, like like pretty much all of these old AMT models. So I would like to just give my shot at um, restore, not really even restoring, but kind of salvaging uh, this model. Yeah, it's a great way to practice my skills. Now I'm not going to try to like this. It's you know just not worth it in my opinion to try to like this. And what I would like to do is clean it up. And make it a, a nice looking display um, work on all these seams i don't even think i'm going to try to re remove the clear parts i think i'm going to paint over them and just give a good paint job on those so really all i'm doing is uh, a lot of body work here it's sealed up i'm going to come back and you can tell where the back is not glued but there's all these parts where you can see all the seam lines just work on cleaning all that up and giving a good paint job and see if we can make something nice out of this. I have a few ideas about some things. I don't know. This is where I get to try. If it doesn't work out, hey, 10 bucks for, you know, experiment around isn't so bad. It's better than buying a whole new kit. And, and I do have a whole brand new one in a box somewhere where if one day I want to come back and try to relight and do it better now that my skills are a little bit better than they used to be, um, then I can do that. I need to clean this off. It has some paint and stuff on it here and there. Uh, something sticky's right there. I'm just going to take some alcohol, clean the whole thing off, and then I'm just going to get to work on uh, all these seams. Uh, glue them together, put in, they got a pretty good chip away. That's common for where, you know, if you're familiar with these, these uh, runners where they connect to the model are really large connections and so you have to be really careful if you bend it away you get this uh, divot just like right here if you can see that divot in there um, that's exactly what happened on that um, but I think we can make something nice so let's just get busy at it all right just uh, working on the body here and right now uh, connected this back section worked a lot on filling the uh, huge seams uh, the huge seams that were on both the uh, top and bottom now there was a little um, part here kind of uh, I think it was intended to be like an impulse drive or was like a little slotted area but it was close to where this uh, huge gap was and just in filling it and everything it started to get covered over so I actually just kind of sanded that off um, I believe it was that was what it was intended for, but I don't think it was ever portrayed that way in the show. But um, So that uh, little detail is now gone. Basically, I'm using uh, just super glue and some baking powder to kind of fill in the gaps. And then I have some instant set to uh, quickly dry that. Uh, the reason I do that is, uh, I mean, you can use uh, some uh, regular putties and whatnot, but it takes time for that to dry where this is pretty much instant. Uh, makes a really strong bond. It is sandable. Now it is, um, it's probably a little harder to sand than some of the putties, but it is quite sandable and I've had a lot of success using that method. Um, but I filled in uh, this. There's still a bit of cleanup to do. It's a bit rough um, where that super glue was at. 
you can see you can see right in here where I've started addressing this huge gap right here. I haven't done it on this side. You can see that kind of that lip on the inside there. Um, but this is looking pretty nice. Feels pretty good. Once I put primer on, I'll be able to see what kind of defects we have going on. Uh, I have drilled a hole in here for a stand when it gets displayed. I've also um, started working on this neck area. Again, there's a huge gap in uh, this area. Good, uh, huge gap and seam line between where the neck connects with the main body on both the top and bottom part of that. Um, you can see there's still a lot of work to kind of do on these uh, lower sections. It got a huge gap in there, uh, but this is coming along. Worked a little bit on that uh, seam line right here. You can tell where I haven't touched it on this part right here and where I have touched it here. I'm just using uh, some really coarse uh, sanding sticks at first to kind of beat down the edges and, and start shaping it. Um, taking quite a bit of material off now. This is really thick plastic, so you, you can kind of get away with that. Um, you can see in, on this upper part of the, I guess, the wing that comes out <clears throat> where I've started addressing that, and that's starting to look good there. And again, you have to not this... Not only like you fill in the gap, I had to use some super glue right in here, um, but you have to kind of shape it too. Once you start saying you just don't want a flat side, you want to keep kind of that round, so you have to kind of be aware of, the, of shaping this. So I used some really coarse sanding sticks, kind of moved to some finer courses, kind of end up with some finer uh, sanding paper to finish it. Now I do have a big gap right here, and I think I can probably glue and fix a lot of that. So I'm going to take some clamps and see if I can show you. I'm going to put some glue in there and then clamp that up. And then that should fix a lot of that gap because right now that's pretty huge. And but I think we can glue that back together. And, but this part's over here still. You can see how rough it is. That's going to be filled in. And we're just going to keep at it. So that's where we're at. All right, I think I've finished kind of my first wave of body work, uh, filling in all the major seams, all the bad joint lines we had, uh, imperfections. So i um, liking the way it's looking right now. Uh, some of the bigger issues, uh, like these leading edges up here, uh, the neck where it connects on both parts, and the tail section. Up in here, I think I've addressed most of that. You can see where I've also come in and start filling in the gaps where the warp nacelles are at on both sides. So I know there's more body work to be done, but uh, from here I want to put on a primer coat to really start exposing uh, the uh, some of the problem areas. Um, it's come a long ways. It feels really solid now. You can see where I've attached the uh, stand that's going to be connected. It's firmly attached. I just drilled a hole and pumped a bunch of hot glue in there, then put this uh, metal pole into it, and then reinforced it with a little super glue. feel like it's in there really good. I don't feel like it's going anywhere. Um, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna tape off uh, this pole. I wanna keep that kind of chrome look to the uh, display uh, stand there. And uh, so from here, I'm just gonna spray it with some rattle can primer and see where we're at. All right, after quite a few hours of body work, I feel like that's about all I can do. There are some minor flaws here and there, but at this point it's uh, kind of a work in diminishing returns. I'm kind of going after little things here and there. I probably keep doing that. Overall, I think it's uh, the body work's um, pretty solid. Uh, not Like I said, just a few minor flaws, and they probably won't show up that much once we paint it. And, uh, of course, all the major gaps have been taken care of. Like the way all that's looking looking right now. So I'm ready to move on to painting. Um, clean it off first. Um, now, just studying the uh, pictures on the Internet, I mean, the colors of greens kind of just very widespread. And I'm really not sure which way to go. I know the studio model tends to be a little bit kind of light sage green, I guess. I haven't looked at that picture in a while, but... Kind of do my own thing. I think as a base coat, I'm going to use this Folk Art uh, Crocodile Green. It's um, a bit of kind of a sagey, darker green. And it's just a base coat. We're going to be doing a lot to the paint. Uh, there's going to be some shadowing. Um, 
some highlights, low lights. I want, you know, just some color modulation, but I don't want it to be too drastic. Just, uh, you know, just a really large ship. It wouldn't be this complete uniform color. So I want to darken out a lot of the areas. Um, so this is just a base coat just to get the green color going. And from there, we'll start adding in all the uh, different colors to change it up and give it some character. All right, here is my base coat, coat on with that uh, crocodile paints, the folk art crocodile color. Uh, this thinned down with some distilled water and then ran through a screen, a mesh screen, to filter all any particles in it. Um, went on really nicely. So, and then from there, I did just a rust oleum matte clear coat to protect it. And uh, pretty happy of how that coverage has gone on. Now this is this base coat, so from here I'm going to take this same crocodile paint color and add some darker shades, maybe even some blacks darkened up a little bit. And I'm just going to start uh, hitting some of these uh, recessed areas, lower areas, uh, parts around the body, just to start uh, giving the uh, paint job a little bit more interest. So I'm going to work on that next, and we'll come back after that stuff. All right, you see where I've added in the shading. I just added a little bit of uh, black to our crocodile color. And I actually went uh, a little bit of black, did some spray painting to uh, darken some areas, and then added some more black. So there's actually a few different shades going on there, or at least three different shades now going on. And I think that really uh, just gives a little depth to the model and a lot more interest to it. So from here, I'm going to start doing some um, outlining of these uh, feathered pattern here. And I believe I'm just going to take some of this uh, model air. This is DE green and uh, try to highlight or give some kind of uh, a, a detail to these uh, feather patterns on the back of the uh, on the top of the ship here. All right, as you can see, the painting's coming along here. I'm starting to do a lot more color modulation, and I'm just using my acrylic paints, mixing them up, uh, darkening them with uh, black or lightening them up with like a light green and uh, going over different places to just really change up. This is a really big ship so there's going to be a lot of color modulation going on and really uh, pleased how this is coming out. As you can see I kind of masked off this area and went really dark on that. Not black or not too contrasting, still a green, just a darker shade of green. I want everything to have have a, uh, a green tint to it, as what it looks like on the show. I uh, highlighted, I believe these are the disruptor banks uh, in the different places, and I used a little bit of this uh, DE green mixed in with a little bit of aluminum, and I kind of give it that metallic color. Uh, again, keeping that green shade, but then kind of offset to look more metallic. I did, you can see where I've uh, highlighted the feather pattern again. I used just a pure DE green in my airbrush, and didn't mask it off, all I would do is, uh, Take like a, a hard edge, a uh, piece of cardboard or whatever, um, and then spray it and let the overspray kind of come down so we're not getting direct spray. Kind of spray your airbrush uh, at the uh, edge, but not on the edge. I mean, you can't go on the edge if you want a little bit. You can see where that kind of uh, hit the edge a little bit too hard. And that's okay. It's a big ship. It's going to have some different things going on, but really happy with how that looks. I think that's very cool. We got a lot of different colors going on without being too crazy. It all kind of blends in together. I did take some dry pastels and kind of darken in these edges here and through here in different places. I took some dry pastels. Kind of the same thing in here. I went ahead and started hitting these recessed areas, give us some color modulation. And I'm just really happy with how all that looks. Um, so from here, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and paint the warp uh, glowing parts on the warp nacelles, and I think I'm gonna try. You know, it's gonna be a painted effect, so I want I need it needs to be really bright. I had this um, parakeet green from Apple Barrel. Now it looks really bright on here. I may have to mix it up, and once I spray it on, it needs to stand out, but it's still a green glowing light on the uh, ship in the show, so it needs to stand out and look different. And so maybe have to mix it with some. Uh, aluminum or metal shades to give it a metallic look or something along those lines. So I'm going to experiment with that. And I'm going to have to get in here and mask off these edges and get all that painted up. So we're getting close to um, getting this done. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and finish painting it out. Keep this video somewhat shorter. And then my last few videos have ran fairly long. 
So I'm going to finish this up, do all the painting. I have a couple of ideas about how I'm going to do the uh, windows. When we look at the revealed model, I'll tell you about how I did that. All right, well, here's my finished uh, model salvage of the Romulan Bird of Prey, the old EMT kit. And uh, i got to say, I'm really happy with how it came out. I got to experiment with a lot of different painting and um, overall just uh, really like how the shading and different things came out. Uh, the contrast of colors, um, really pleased with just how they come out of the body work. And though it was uh, quite a bit of body work, that's where most of the work went into for all the this major seams across the neck and on uh, the top and bottom parts of the wings. Uh, we had some major gaps uh, back here on the back parts that had to be addressed. So a lot of filling, a lot of body work, a lot of sanding and filing. Um, and then the painting, um, you know, just you know, all came together. I uh, really like the blend of colors. Uh, I think that helps uh, give it a, a sense of scale. It's a really supposed to be a really big ship. So I think having uh, the kind of the blend of colors, the modulation of colors, the lights and darks, the heavy shading in some areas um, kind of bring that about. And uh, so you can just see some of that there. Really pleased with it. Um, the only thing, it would have been nice if I would have started brand new and put lights in it to give it that, um, that little extra. But even without lights, I think this is really, uh, I'm really proud of how this came out. Um, to finish up with some of the um, uh, windows, I uh, kind of made my own, my own decals. As you can see here, I just kind of printed out some, some light green uh, lines with some blacks mixed in to kind of represent, I guess, uh, rooms that were off. Um, and just did a whole bunch of, you see, I didn't need near as much as what I printed out. I tried yellow, um, just like some yellow ones, but uh, with this type of homemade decal, and it just doesn't show up well on dark colors. The darker colors kind of bring it out. It has to be, for the lighter colors to come out, it has to really be uh, on something like a white or very light uh, colored. Uh, background so but you can see here uh, the light green actually turns out pretty good we have some here and uh, let's take a see if I can give you a better look at that of how that turned out I think I got this just a tad bit crooked I meant for those lines to go straight across it's just a tad bit crooked I got some up here um, another issue is that they, they just don't dissolve the same way as other decals I use a lot of setting solution and um, when you print these out what you do is after you print them out you have to put several coats of acrylic clear gloss on it and I, uh, I think that this doesn't dissolve uh, not with setting solution so there's a little bit you can see a little bit of the carrier coming across so just minor things um, something I guess the biggest thing that I'm not happy with is kind of how the ends of the warp nacelles are to just I need to find some other paint. So I'm not giving up on you. I'm stopping for now because I don't have anything on the hand. And it might be a while before I get to the hobby store. I find some kind of really bright um, green paint to paint those very ends. The insides look pretty good, if you, as you can see back in here. Uh, painted those. I actually kind of carefully masked it off and used a spray paint to mask those with a really bright green. And uh, But really, this the paint job, uh, especially on this uh, top part, I think really... Uh, came together and looks really nice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, model salvage. I, I enjoyed doing these. I'll probably do more in the future. It's neat to, you know, if it doesn't turn out, you don't lose a lot of money. And, and if it does turn out, then you get a, a nice looking model kit. So I uh, appreciate you joining me. And until next time, everybody have a good one.